Welcome to Optimum Solutions iSeries 2018 Year-End Training Webinar. My name is Susan Warren and I'll be your presenter today. You should have received an email with a link to the documentation for today's session and I hope you've printed that. But if not, you can print or view that by going to our website at www.optimumhris.com and logging in to the customer support site. And I'm showing that here on your screen. You can search for uh, iSeries Year End. I'm just going to search for Year End, and I think iSeries comes right to the top. And then you can click on the 2018 guide for your version. Today we're going to use the guide for version 7, but if you're on version 6, you can print or view that guide for version 6, and it will be very easy for you to follow along in the webinar because the year-end screens and processes are very similar between the two versions. And where there are significant differences, I'll try to mention those, but there really are not many. Also, for those of you who may use GUI interfaces, we're going to be looking at the green screens today. Remember, there is no difference in the options except that you point and click in GUI and I am actually entering commands on the command line. But all the screens are exactly the same whether you have GUI or green screen. I'm going to scroll down to the table of contents in the year-end document, and that's going to serve as our agenda for today. Got a little bit of a delay here on my go-to meeting or go-to webinar, but if you'll go to that table of contents in your document, um, you can see what our agenda is going to be for the day. And we're going to start on page three with Optimum's suggestions for how you can have a successful year end. And the key to a successful year end is planning and preparation. Who owns the year end process? Uh, often that is the payroll department but many other areas of your organization may be involved and working together to complete that successful year end. Perhaps HR has a big role to play and maybe you have accounting benefits. Maybe you need to have your IT staff involved because they're going to play a crucial role in picking up those opticoms that you're going to need. Maybe you're going to be mailing a lot of W-2s sometime during January. So you're going to need a lot of postage that you don't normally have on hand. So you might need to involve your mailroom in a committee that you establish for your year end. So be sure and involve all of the people that need to be involved. And in your organization, it might be more than just the things I have listed here. Be sure to schedule carefully around your holidays, especially if you've got a narrow window where you're getting a lot of these things accomplished. If you have a weekly payroll and there's a, a very short window of time, between your last payroll of 2018 and your first payroll of 2019, you need to get those tax tables loaded in that Opticom in a very short period of time. So you don't want to find out when your IT staff has gone on holiday or vacation that you need to have those Opticoms loaded. So be sure you tell folks ahead of time when you're going to need them so that they won't be out of the office. Hopefully last year you took a lot of good notes. Hopefully nothing went wrong, but probably something went not exactly as planned. So if you made notes and kept a good log, you can look at those notes from last year. Do the same thing again this year. 
make notes about any issues that come up and make sure that you're prepared for them this year so that uh, those don't present themselves as problems again and do the same thing this year. Make notes so that next year you can be prepared so that those things don't come up again. I trust that all of you have balanced all of your payrolls throughout the year so that every quarter you balanced so that at year end everything should balance. When you file your W-2s with Social Security and your 940 with IRS, those two agencies are going to compare notes. And if everything doesn't match, that's when you start getting letters. And you don't want that to happen. So if everything has balanced all through the year, then you shouldn't have any problems at year end. You shouldn't start getting any of those letters. And everything should all be balanced and no issues. One of the things you'll do at year end is identify taxable benefits that need to be added to your employees' taxable wages before you create your W-2s and file your year end reports. Something else that you need to do is order the necessary number of W-2 forms and also ACA forms. And we'll discuss that. And after everything is done, pay attention to the details. Have uh, everybody verify the information on their checks, their name, their address, their social security number. Make sure that all of that matches what's on file with social security. Make sure that you verify your details. The legal name, address, and federal ID number of your company should match what the Social Security and IRS have on file for your company. Verify your state numbers for your state taxes, your state unemployment. We're going to look at the details of how you can do that today. Be sure you run a test of your W-2s on plain paper Hold them up to the forms that you got and make sure everything lines up so that you're not going to run into a problem when you get ready to print those forms. And then at the end, say thanks to all the people that helped you. Reward everybody. Optimum Solutions is all about you're having a successful 2018 year end. And we want to make sure that happens for you. So. We're here for you. Reach out to us in any way for anything that we can help you with. Phone call, emails, anything we can do to help you. We're going to start out looking today at what's new for year-end 2018 by looking at the W-2 for 2018. And what I'm showing you here is the employee's copy of the W-2. This is the one that you're going to give them to keep for their records. I want to start out with box 9, which of course is not new, but what's new about it is that this year it is not shaded as it has been for the past couple of years. Box 9 is part of an IRS pilot program, and it's been shaded because not Every payroll uh, is a participant in this pilot program. They have expanded the pilot program. And it's a pilot program that the IRS has offered to a lot of payroll service bureaus. But Optimum Solutions is not your service bureau. You process your own payroll. Optimum Solutions does not process your payroll for you. Therefore, your box 9, even though it's not shaded anymore, will be blank, and that is correct. But I want you to understand that so that when you have employees who come to you and say, what's wrong with my W-2? My wife or my husband's W-2 has a number in box 9. Why does mine not have that? Well, that's because your wife or your husband's company has their payroll done by a service bureau who participates in this IRS pilot program. We don't do that. So your W-2 is correct with a blank box 9. So I want you to be able to explain that to your employees who question that because a lot of you will have that happen. In box 12, there are a couple of new codes 
that may apply to you. There is a new box code GG, which can indicate income from qualified equity grants under Internal Revenue Code Section 83I, and also new W-2 box 12 code HH, which can indicate aggregate deferrals under Internal Revenue Code 83I. New for box 14 with a code U would be Oregon Transit Tax for those of you who are in Oregon. And if you set up your Oregon Transit Tax code according to our instructions earlier in the year, your Oregon Transit Tax should automatically appear in box 14 without you having to do anything special. I wanted to make you aware of a new employer tax credit for certain employers who may have paid certain kinds of family medical leave to certain types of employees. Here's a website, and this is also in your document. You can go to this website to see if you might qualify for this employer tax credit. Only in certain instances that this applies, that you can check this out. Now, this has been this way all year, and we did notify you of this earlier in the year, but the supplemental federal tax rate for 2018 did change from 25% to 22% for 2018. So a lot of you, this doesn't apply until you get ready to pay year-end bonuses. So if you haven't used the supplemental rate until now, be sure that you go to your tax codes, to the supplemental tax rates, and make sure that your federal supplemental rate is set at 22%. Also in your handout, you'll see that there is a change to the mandatory withholding on supplemental wages over $1 million. That's 37%. The backup withholding on 1099s when no taxpayer identification number is provided is 24%. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act suspends deduction of personal exemptions from taxable income. The standard deduction substantially increased. It just about doubled for every tax bracket. The child tax credit increased from $1,000 to $2,000 per qualifying child. And your employees are going to see these things when they file their personal income tax returns this year. Therefore, they may come to you with a lot of questions. So just be aware of those things. And on that same note, when they do come to you with questions, you may want to refer them to the IRS withholding calculator. Um, because of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, our tax tables changed pretty dramatically in 2018. And my suspicion is that a lot of your employees, when they file their tax returns in April or the early part of this year, will have either large refunds or will owe considerable tax amounts this year in early 2019. So, I suspect a lot of you will face employees who come to you and say, I need to change my withholdings. What should I do? And of course, you're not allowed to give advice on how your employees should fill out the new W-4 forms. And there was a lot of talk of the W-4 forms changing. Well, that's been put off till 2020. We're going to talk about the W-4 forms in just a minute. But what you should do is refer your employees to this IRS withholding calculator. And I've shown you here on this slide a snippet of what this withholding calculator looks like when they start walking through the screens. It's very easy to go through. It's just asking them very basic questions. Now, they will need probably their most recent 1040 how they filed their last taxes, because it's going to ask them a lot of questions, and they'll need the answers from that last tax return. And also, for employees who might have more complicated tax situations, it might be a good idea for you to keep on hand 
Pub 505, which is tax withholding and estimated tax, or let your employees know how they can get that at irs.gov. It's very easy to navigate through the IRS website. But when your employees come to you and ask you questions, you're going to need to direct them to other sources since you can't help them decide how to change their W-4 forms. I'm going on through the list of what's new. Repayment of income from a prior tax year up to $3,000. You can no longer claim that as an itemized deduction. Back in August, some of you probably began receiving letters from the IR or from Social Security to employers who had filed W-2 forms with mismatches, name and Social Security number mismatch in the past. They are emphasizing the importance of accuracy and they're emphasizing the right of the IRS to enforce fines. Every year the IRS says we're going to fine. Well, the fines have increased this year. And it's more important than ever that you make sure that those names and numbers do match. The fines for both mis mismatches on both W-2s and Affordable Care Act 1095C forms has increased. So we need to make sure that we're filing correct information on all of our forms that are going to the IRS and Social Security Administration. Optimum Solutions offers some methods for verifying those forms that we're going to talk about just a little bit later today. And also, uh, E-Verify is a great help. I hope a lot of you are making, uh, taking advantage of E-Verify today. What's new for 2019? Social Security wage base has increased. It will be $132,900. The tax rate will still be the same at 6.2%, but that makes your maximum withholding $8,239.80. The employer match will be an equal contribution and the Medicare withholding and contributions are the same as they have been. There's no change to the Medicare. Here's the 2019 W-4 form. Now, there was great talk of significant change to the W-4 form. That has been delayed until the 2020 W-4 form. So the only change that I could tell on this form was the year. So I think the W-4 form for 2019 is exactly the same as it has been in the past. This is a draft version that you're looking at. It's not been released yet, but I don't foresee any significant changes. For a 1K limits and other savings plans that most of you participate with will increase to $19,000 and the catch-up contributions for employees over age 50 have not changed. Those remain at $6,000. HSA limits are published in your handout and are here on this slide. I'm not going to read all of those to you. Some of them changed from last year. Some of them did not change. The FSA limits that were in your handout and that appear on this slide are incorrect. Instead of 2650, that should be 2700. Health FSA limit increases to 2700. Now the document that's on the website will be corrected, but you may want to take the document that you printed earlier and change that on page, I think it's page five, where it says HSA limits for 20, FSA limits. The health FSA limit increases to 2700, and that document will be updated on our website.
Affordable Care Act, the value of health care benefits that prints on your W-2 and also the 1095C forms. Everybody asks, is it going to end? Is it going to go away? No, at least not for this year. So keep calm and carry on just like you have been doing. As a matter of fact, there are virtually no changes to the processes and procedures no changes except for the dates on the forms that you'll be filling out. So for that reason, Optimum Solutions is not going to do a new Affordable Care Act webinar this year. The steps that you'll follow will be the same as last year. So last year's webinar is still available on our website. If you need a refresher on the steps, you can go out and see last year's webinar. It's still out there. And uh, documents are still available, too. So it's going to be the same steps, no changes. Everything's still out there. States change their tax tables almost daily. A new state or locality releases information about changes for 2019. We'll put those changes in Opticoms that we'll release later on in December, but we also put those changes in a document that's called the Year-End Payroll and Tax Updates document. You can find that document on our website. You can go to that same year-end search that I showed you earlier and navigate to that website for your app for your um, version, version 6 or version 7, and this document, this year-end payroll and tax updates document, gets updated almost every day at this time of year. So check back often there to see what state changes have been added, because just because you look at that document today does not mean that your state won't have a change added tomorrow. That's another reason why we have to release that year-end Opticom with our tax tables over and over because just as soon as we release it one day, the next day another state releases their tax table changes. So we have to release that Opticom again. So unfortunately, that's the way that one goes. All right, on pages six and seven of your handout, we have a year-end process checklist. If you will actually take that checklist out of your document when you start your year-end process and literally check off the boxes as you go through this process, that's the best way for you to determine that you have done everything that you need to do for your year-end process. That way you can be sure that you've not missed any step. If there's a step that doesn't apply to you, just exit out. But once you get to the bottom and you've checked off or X'd out all those boxes, you can be sure that you haven't skipped anything. So on page 8, <clears throat> we tell you how to begin to prepare for the 2018 year-end process. And the first thing that we mentioned is purchasing forms from Optimum's preferred provider. You can go ahead and purchase your W-2 forms and your 1095C forms. They're both available. We have a preferred provider, and that's print-to-mail documents. Their website is taxformsusa.com, and that's in your document. Our contact there is Bob Benson, and I've given you his email address, his telephone number with his extension. I've given you examples of the forms. That's the 2017 1090C form, but the 2018 form looks just like that, and also a picture of the 2018 W-2 form. <clears throat> if you go to the website there for Tax Forms USA, uh, you can click on the fact that you're an Optimum Solutions customer, and you can see the forms that are available. Now, be aware that you don't have to purchase your forms from our preferred provider. If you do, they're guaranteed to work with your Optimum Solutions software. There are hundreds 
of versions of these forms available for you to purchase at other places. Optimum Solutions does not support the hundreds of forms that are available for you to purchase at office supply stores and Walmart and lots of other places where you can go and just pick up a, a box of W-2 forms. So if you decide to purchase forms someplace besides uh, print to mail, just make sure that you look at their website and compare what they offer with the forms that you are going to pro purchase someplace else and make sure the forms you're getting look identical to the ones on this website because you may be getting forms that are not supported by our software. And I don't want you to have that happen. So make sure that the forms that you're getting are forms that are supported by our software because there are forms out there that will not work with our software. Step two on page nine, verify that your social security numbers are accurate. We've already talked about the penalties that you might have to pay for W-2s or 1095C forms where there are mismatches between names and numbers. All the methods offered by Social Security Administration are free for these verifications. And we're going to look just a little bit later at a, a method that we have on our menus for creating a file to send to Social Security to verify that your numbers are correct. Okay, I want to drop over here to the I series and start looking at some screens. We're going to look at verifying that your W-2 box 13 flags are set correctly. On your employee's FE screens, and that's the federal information, I'm going to go to an employee's FE screen. The retirement plan flag. This should be yes. If your employee was an active participant for any part of the year in a defined benefit plan. Now there are specifics about this in your W-2 instructions. And let me give you a little heads up here. If this is not marked for all of your employees who participated in your 401k, if you have your 401k deduction code set correctly as deferred compensation and W-2 box code D, it's going to show correctly in box 13, but this really should be marked as well. You don't have to go and mark every one of these if, if they're not all marked. But if you want to have all your I's dotted and T's crossed, this is one of the things to check. There's a little disclaimer at the bottom of page 9, just to remind you that any screens that I show you during the webinar or even screens that you see in our documents are for examples only intended for illustration. You'll see some strange things in our libraries because they're for testing only. So you need to set up your screens, your deductions, benefits, earnings codes, all of your codes tables and all of your employees according to the way that your company needs to have them set up. So just because you see things in our examples does not mean that you need to copy those examples exactly if your company needs to have something set up differently. And page 10 shows you that uh, an earnings code for third-party sick pay is another one of those box 13 flags. So let's go to our codes tables and look at the earnings code for third-party sick pay. And on the earnings type, I can press F4. And here is the third party sick pay. This is what will drive it to the correct box, box 13 flag on the W-2. So if you have third party sick pay as an earnings code, 
You want to make sure that this earnings type is flagged correctly for third-party sick pay. And on page 10, we also discuss Form 8922, which is a third-party sick pay recap. That's been in place for about four years now, so I'm not going to go into the discussion about that. On page 11, step four, verify that deductions and benefits are set up with the proper W-2 box code if needed. Not all of your deductions and benefits will have W-2 box codes. Some of the more common ones, of course, are going to be your 401k. Let me show you my 401k. And I'm going to go to the employee portion on a 401k. That's the deduction side. And down here, I have it marked yes for deferred comp. And it's going to show in W-2 box code D, but W-2 box 12 with a code D. And I can press F4 here to get a list of the valid codes. This is the deduction. And I can go up to my group term life, and I'll use option R for the employer portion. That's a benefit that the employer pays, and it needs to show in box 12 with a code C. This is a benefit, and again, I can press F4. It's my group term life insurance over $50,000, and it needs to show in box 12 with code C. So make sure that your deductions and benefits are set correctly with the correct W-2 box codes. On page 12, we remind you how to make sure that your benefit and deduction taxabilities are set up correctly. So in version 7, you would go to your tax code. In version six, you actually do this at the deduction and benefit level. I'm going to go to my company 500. And what we recommend that you do in the document is just put a two down by every tax code that you have set up. I'm just going to go to one of mine. I'm going to go to my federal tax code. And not an option two. I want an option B for benefit taxability and press enter and make sure that all of your taxable benefits are listed and all of your pre-tax deductions are listed. If you need to add any or take any away, you should call your software support representative and let them know what has happened because they will have to help you run some taxable wage fix programs. If there are any taxable benefits that you did not enter throughout the year on regular payroll, um, you can run, uh, you can add that benefit code to the employee's master file and then process that benefit on the last payroll of the year. Or you could process a manual check with nothing but the benefit amount at the end of the year after you've done all your payrolls and just add that benefit for the taxable amount. <coughs> Excuse me. You'll need to verify that all of your federal, state, and local taxable amounts are correct. So there are several different reports that you can run out of the system to make sure about that. 
several of those reports are on the quarter year end menu. They're listed at the bottom of page 12 under step 7. <clears throat> I'm going to show you the ones that are on the quarter year end menu first. Under the federal quarterly returns, you can run your 941 detail. And then also here you can run your state and local uh, tax reports, options two and three. And then your state unemployment reports would be under option six. And I can page down. And option 26 is your taxable wage listing. And then on your, I'm going to go back up to the second one listed here, your year-to-date payroll register report. That's actually on your payroll processing menu. And then pay process reports by dates, that's option six. And then gross to net reports is three. And then your pay register detail and Summary. Those are options seven and eight. Those may also help you verify your tax, taxable amounts and taxes. So those are some great reports to help you balance and verify that all of your taxable amounts and taxes are correct. And you can also print a preliminary W-2 edit after you create your W-2 work file. And we're going to look at those steps when we get to the W-2 process. Now, another thing about the W-2 edit is that it will help you determine how many W-2 forms to order. And of course, we're going to look at those W-2 steps in great detail later on today, and I will show you all the information from that W-2 edit, including how to determine how many um, W-2 forms you can order. Step eight on page 13, verify employer state tax IDs. Now these are going to be back on our code tables. Go back to your tax codes and make sure that your tax IDs for all of the taxes that you're going to be filing. I'm going to look at my Alabama state code here. I'm just going to take a two and make sure that these numbers are correct. This is your state. You do the same for your state unemployment. Make sure that these numbers are correct. And then your company master file is where your federal ID number is going to be found. And especially if you have converted from version 6 to version 7 during the year, make sure that you confirm that these numbers converted correctly. On page 14, we discuss how to verify that the information you're filing with the government is correct. You need to make sure that everything is balanced. Hopefully, you've verified that every payroll that you ran during the year balanced and that all your quarters balanced. There's a formula near the top of this page, gross less non-taxable pay less pre-tax deductions plus taxable benefits equals taxable wages. And that holds true in the system always. There's no exception to that formula. Um, we do have an Excel spreadsheet that is on our website that you can search for on the website. Uh, you can download that. And there are some reports that you can use, run from the system to fill in the information on that, web, uh, on that spreadsheet some reports that we discussed on the page before. You can add columns for your own information on that spreadsheet if you need to, and compare the results to the preliminary W-2 edit. And we'll talk about how to run that in just a few minutes. 
after you finish your final payroll in 2018 and before you process your first payroll in 2019, you should save your employee files. And we give you those steps on page 14 and 15. You can save either to a tape or to a save file. You might need to get your IT staff to help you with this. At the bottom of page 15, in version 7, this option doesn't exist in version 6. If you were using, during open enrollment, our option for updating future dated benefits, this is a good time for you to run the update to move the future dated information to their benefit screen. Now, if you're using future dated benefits, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not using it, you may not know what I'm talking about, and that's fine. Don't panic if you don't know what I'm talking about. That's because you're not using this option. If you want more information about this, you can ask your support rep, but it allows you during open enrollment to mark benefits to be changed at the beginning of the new year. Um, there's another option later on, if this is not a good place in the process for you to run this option, um, you can do this at another chance. I'll mention it again later. You can set an automatic job scheduler to run this for you, or you can use a manual command here. The, the command is in this step two on the bottom of page 15 that you can type on a command line to perform this update manually. Either way, it's going to work. You might need help from your IT staff if you're going to add it to a job scheduler. On page 16, step three, you can give your employees a total compensation report. We call it a benefit statement. You can print those from your quarter year-end menu. And that is option four on the quarter year-end menu. And there's an example of a benefit statement on page 16. It shows not only the employee's earnings for the year, but other things that would be considered benefits paid by the company. Maybe truly benefits or taxes that might be paid by the employer. The employer's portion of FICA, Medicare, unemployment taxes, things that are paid by the employer on behalf of the employee that can be added to the wages so that the employee sees the total compensation. A lot of employers use this as stuffers at the end of the year to go in with the W-2s so that the employee sees exactly how much they're getting. Before your first payroll of 2019, you will need to pick up the Opticom for your new tax tables, and we will let you know when that is ready. If you are on a really tight time schedule and we have not announced that that Opticom is ready, don't hesitate to contact your software support rep and let her know that you need that update. Um, we can get that to you maybe early, or we can help you manually enter those updates into your system. So don't hesitate to let us know if you need that earlier than we have released it. We're waiting for as many states as we can get into that Opticom before we release that table. Now, I'll let you know that state unemployment rate changes have to be maintained by the user your state does not tell us what your new unemployment rate is going to be. So you have to update those rates as well as state disability rates for self-insured companies. And you might need to run your quarter four tax reports for unemployment and state disability before you change those rates. So that's just a heads up there. Also for Washington State Workers' Comp risk, class rate changes. Those also need to be updated by the user. Optimum Solutions does not update those automatically. 
if you want to see in version 7 the optimum provided tax tables, you can use the command go optimum and take option 1 for optimum maintained tax tables. And there you can see the federal tables, state tables, and so forth. Just to confirm that you did get your tables loaded, you can page down. You can see we've already got 2019 tables out here, but you can take a look at the 2018 tables. Let's see, this is the FICA limit. Let's see what the 2019. We've already got the 2019 tables out here. The bottom of page 16, you can run a report from the quarter year end menu to determine if there are any employees who need to file a new W-4. Employees who might be marked that they are not subject to certain taxes. You may need them to file a new W-4 at the beginning of the next year so that they can change that not subject to a certain tax standing. <clears throat> And after you pick up your end of year Opticoms, you'll be able to go to those employees' names and take option W4 and print a 2019 blank W4 form in version 7 for them to fill out. But you do have to wait until after you get your new Opticom at the end of the, or the beginning of the year. Again, in version 7, if you are using it, the date control options on your company master file, date control options, and this is on page 18 in your handout, your date control options will prevent users from entering dates when they start a payroll that are outside of the date ranges that you specify on this screen. And there's a picture of this screen filled out on page 18 with dates that you may use in 2019, example dates. Not all of you use this, but if you do, this is something you would need to update at the end of the year before you can run payrolls for 2019. Also on your company master, you might need to reset the dates for your workers' comp premium year. You need to update these to be your 2019 plan year dates. The bottom of page 19 is a very important step. This is the mass benefit goal to date update for each company. This will reset all of your goal to date and zero the goal to date benefits with annual limits. Now, most often this is applied to the 401k, but it's not limited to 401k. There may be other benefits and deductions that have goal to date or annual limits. Most often we think about the 401k because it always has a limit. This year it's going from 18,500 changing to 19,000. So in version 7, from the main menu, we take option 1 for file maintenance, and then option 20 for utilities, and option 2 for benefit utilities, and then option 1 for the mass benefit goal to date update. I want to go to my company, 500 to my 401k. And I'm going to select that with an option one. And you can see last year my benefit limit was 18,500. This year I'm going to change it to 19,000. I do want to update my employee goal and I do want to zero my goal to date. And I'm going to press enter. And enter again. 
Now I've just updated all of my employees limits to 19,000. If I have a raw 401k, I would do the same thing for my raw. I've already done my Roth. You can see how I did that. Did that? Did it exactly the same way. Now, for an employee, for your employees who have the, both the Roth and the for, uh, traditional 401k, you would need to go to those employees. Go to their benefit screen. And here, this employee has both 401k and Roth. Let me show you. If I go to her employee deduction screen, it updated her goal amount to 19,000. This is her 401k, and she contributes 6%. It's got 19,000. And on her Roth, she contributes 3%, and it's got 6, 61.60. So we need to split that. We need to make that proportionately correct. So I need to press F9 for my Roth 401k limits. No, she does not have catch-up. She's got 6%. I forgot to do something. My master file is not correct. I need to go change my master file for my 401k. So I need to go to my code tables for my benefits. And go to my employee. and change the limit there. And also for my Roth, now let's go back to the employee. Maybe that doesn't change until I press, until I run the update. I'm going to update the limit with F9. And now let's go back in to her E screen. I'm I know what I didn't do. I didn't actually do the update on the Roth. I'm not going to waste your time because we've got too much to do. But those are the steps. <laughs> Sorry about that. Here's the next time when you can run your update future dated benefits option. It's listed at the, sort of in the middle of page 21, near the bottom of page 21. So after you've updated your 401k limit, you can run your update future dated benefits option if you did not run it earlier. And then for the benefits where the goal amount limit changes, remember to go to the code tables and change it there so that when you have new hires, you'll hire those new people with the new updated benefit limits. And if you have any new benefits to add for the year, 
be sure and add those um, for the new year. Back to your code tables. At the bottom of page 21, we're going to look at our pay cycles. If you are keeping your calendar for your pay cycles, I'm going to show you my weekly pay cycle, and I'm going to use option P, pay periods and dates. Here you can see 2017, and as I page down, you can see 2018, and I'll page down. And then you can see I've added my 2019 dates. And these are actually pictured on page 22 in your handout. And you can use option F for benefit frequencies and add those as well as option 2 to add the information that you would see on the right hand side of the screen if you want to add more information. And if you have another company that uses the same calendar, you can use option C to copy that weekly pay cycle calendar from one company to another company. And that might actually save you a lot of setup time. If you're using Optimum Solutions Time and Attendance, at year end, you would also need to go to the setup menu in time and attendance and set up your holiday calendar with option 15. Go to your calendar. I use the standard calendar in my company. I'm going to use option 8 to add my calendar dates for the new year. And you can see I've already done that. Here are my 2019 dates. And you can just delete the dates that you've already used for 2018 if you need to. Get rid of Thanksgiving. I've already paid that. And just F6 to add new dates. I'm going to go back to my code tables and payroll. It's on the company master file where you'll set your new OSHA safety number, safety incident number. And right here, you can set that to be the year, and you can start it with 000 or 001, and it will start numbering your safety incidents with the next number in sequence after this number. Step 9 at the bottom of page 25 is referring to the Affordable Care Act and adding your employer-provided health care benefits. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because this is something we've discussed for many years now. So you should have been doing this since 2013. This is talking about getting your benefits added to your employee's deduction amount. I think everybody's probably already handling this. Um, the um, transition relief is still in effect, so employers who have fewer than 250 W-2 forms um, can still file paper 1095Cs. So nothing here has really changed. All this goes in box 12 with code DD, and it is the aggregate combination of the employer paid health care plus the employee's deduction for health care. If you want to import your information from an outside source, maybe your insurance carrier will provide you with a file um, for importing that information to your W-2s. On your W-2 processing menu, you can page down and there is option 30. And beginning on the bottom of page 25 and continuing through page 26, 27, and 28,
we have instructions on how this option 30 import W2 box 12 data works. So your, your outside source would have to give you a file with uh, the layout according to the specifications here and then you could upload that information into your W2s. Step 10 on page 28, if you're using pay grades, and step 11, if you're using job classes, by effective dates, you might need to come out here and change those rates and or dates. On pay grades, you would come out here and use step 7 to go to the pay grade steps. That's where the effective date is. So you might need to either take an option 2 and change the effective date or change the rate or stop this, whatever you need to do. Same sort of thing with job class codes. They can have uh, effective dates. Option 7 would let you go to an effective date. You might need to put a stop date or change the start date or change the amount if you're using those. Step 12 on page 28 is a nutshell version of Affordable Care Act. Just the brief steps, you would create your control file for 2019. You would attach benefits and employment status codes and if applicable, a lowest cost to that control file. Then you would run the mass add to attach that to your employees. Or you could import that with option four. You can run reports to edit that information. And then you can go to your employees master files to their benefit screen and use F7 to look at their affordable tactics. A CARE Act information and edit it throughout the year, maintaining new hires, terminations, changes to covered individuals, and anything that you might need to change throughout the year. And there is more information available on Affordable Care Act uh, on our website through your software support rep, and there is also that video that I referred to earlier. Some other things that you might need to consider at year end would be perhaps PTO accrual or payout. You may process bonuses at year end. Maybe pay increases, stock options, collective bargaining agreements if you have unions, and your company may have other items that they only do at year end. So be sure you mark your calendars for the things that you have to do at year end that maybe other companies don't have to do. Page 29, we're going to take a look now at the W-2 process and filing. You will get two W-2, or we will announce, rather, two separate W-2 program opticons. One of those will be for those of you who use just the regular W-2 option. I'm going to go to the quarter year-end menu. And option number five is what I call the regular W-2 processing menu, and that's what the majority of you use. But some of you, I'll page down, use option 40, the consolidated tax reporting menu. If you've got multiple companies that you consolidate, um, perhaps they're in different files environments. But for W-2 processing, you consolidate those into one file. Um, if you don't know what that is, that means you're not using it, so don't worry about it. And this is in version 7 only. Version 6 doesn't have this option. The majority of you will use option 5, the W-2 processing menu, and that's the one we're going to look at today. The new W-2 programs will be released in an update that we'll tell you about in December. It's going to be an Opticom, so just install that like you do other Opticoms. It will have a call command. 
It's just the W2 programs. It's not the entire files library or pro programs library. Some things you might want to do before you create your W2s, verify your social security numbers. And we give you uh, methods so that you can create a file to send to the Social Security Administration if you want to do that. From the quarter year end menu, I'll page down and you'll see option 30 to create the Social Security Number Verification file. So you can take that option 30 and fill in this information. There's a picture of this on page 29 in your handout. This is going to create a file named EVSREQ2K, and that file is going to be in your OIPAY files library. And you can send that file and a report to the Social Security Administration. And there is an employment verif employee verification service bulletin on their website that you need to read before you do that. They'll explain how to do this and where to send the file. And they will read your file. And within 24 hours, they will return to you a file which you can download and look at. And there's a picture of an example of a file that's been returned on page 30 of your handout. And I'll show you one of those that we've downloaded with option 31. This is the kind of file that Social Security will send back to you. And this column on the far right, these are error codes. And they tell us that these employees in our file had some sort of a problem. So I can take an option five here by Sally Chandler. And this tells me that her code six says that her Social Security number did not verify for an other reason. In that handout that you can get from the Social Security Administration, it explains what all these verification error codes actually mean. That there was a name number mismatch, that the sex was wrong, that the birth date was wrong, it wasn't what they had on file. So lots of explanations here. So you can verify that all of your Social Security numbers are correct before you actually file your W-2s with the Social Security Administration. Once you're certain that all of your Social Security numbers are correct, you're ready to go ahead and go to your W-2 processing menu and create your work files. That is at the bottom of page 30. We're going to start creating the employee W-2 work file. That's option one on your W-2 menu. There's a lot of information that's pictured here on this screen, and most of it covers the things that we've talked about earlier today. It's reminding you to check your benefits and your deductions and your earnings codes and tax codes, but it's here for a reason. So I would encourage you to read this. I'll page down and show you that there's even another screen full of information that's reminding you to check some very important things. And once you've checked all of that, press F9 to continue. And here's the screen that you actually fill out with your parameters to create your W-2 work file. I'm going to create it from my company for 2018. There's a picture of this screen on page 31 in your handout. I'm going to use my employee master address all the time. I do want to create zero dollar state tax information because I pay in Tennessee and Texas and they don't have state income taxes. So I want to use those zero dollar state taxes. I want to print those on my W-2s. <laughs> I did not have employees in Pennsylvania this tax year, but maybe you did, so you might say yes here. My earnings code for a third party sick pay is TPS. And if you had benefits or earnings for any of these items, you can put them here. I'm going to say run in batch no. And I'll press enter. And I get a warning 
that says my W2 work file already exists. And that's probably because your work file is there from last year, and that's fine. You probably saved that work file. I know I created mine yesterday. You can create your W2 work file as many times as you need to. Just remember that if you made any changes to your work file, if you recreate the work file, you're going to lose any changes that you may have made. But that's okay for me right now. I know that I want to recreate this file again. So I'm going to press F9 to continue. And it's going to generate my W2 work file. And then I can go into that work file and make any changes that I might need to. I can take on option two and change my W2 work file. Here's my company number. Here are my employees. I can take an option two, and that will show me my federal information, my demographic information, and my federal information. I can use F7 to go to boxes 12 and 14, or I can use F8 to go to my state and local information. Let's say her third-party sick pay information actually came in after I had created my W-2s. So I might come out here and put in third-party sick pay information. That's a legitimate change that you might actually need to make. And then I'd also need to say yes on my third-party sick pay box 13 flag. So I could press enter and enter again. Now I could also get to boxes 12 and 14 with option 7 here. If I needed to make any changes, I could. Or I could also get to state and local with option eight here. And if I needed to make any changes, I could. You know, she moved really early in the year, and we never used Arizona, so I'm going to delete that. And we never really used Utah, so I'm going to delete that. So, you know, you can make changes here. Okay. I've made all the changes I want to make. So I'm going to F3. Now we have pretty much zoomed right through a lot of pages on the handout. <coughs> I'm now on step 5 on page 34. I'm going to print my W2 report. Now remember, this is the one that tells me a number of forms that I would want to order. Now, today, after the webinar is over, you can go to your W-2 menu and you can take option number one and then go straight to option number three and print that W-2 edit. I'm going to print it for company 500. I want to print my combined federal, state, and local. I like sorting mine by employee number by company, but you've got lots of options here. You can print yours however you want to sort it. Do you want to print the totals page every 40th page, yes or no? I want to print both terminated and active. So I'm not going to do a T or an A. I'm going to do both a B. You can put in A state code or leave it blank for all. You can put in A local code or leave it blank for all. You can put in a H for hourly or S for salaried. I'm going to leave it blank for all. You can print your edit for one, two, three, four, or five employees. I'm going to leave it blank for all. I am not going to run this in batch. I'm going to run it interactively, and I'm going to press Enter. And my W-2 edit is in my spool file. So I'll press Enter and go to my spool file. And there's my edit. So I can take a five to display that. At the top, it gives you all your box code information just to explain to you what's in every box. So I'm just going to page down until I start seeing my information. Here we go. Here's my employee information. Now, this doesn't look like a W-2. This is a report. This is an edit report that you can use for editing. Here's my box one information, my box three information, my box five information. Here's my box 12 information. This is box code 12, box 12 code C, box 12 code DD, and so forth. 
Here's my next employee, and if I went over to the right, you could see box two with a dollar amount, box four, and so forth. I'm going to go to the bottom of this report, and then I need to, it's right here, total employees printed for company. Now, you might have to page up just a little bit, because you'll probably have more totals at the bottom of your report than I do. But you'll find near the bottom of your report the total employees printed for your company. I need to order at least 21 W-2s for my company. If I know that they're all lazy and sloppy and going to lose their W-2s, I'll go out on a limb and I'll order 40 W-2s because I know I'm going to have to reprint them. So this is where you can find out how many W-2s you need to order. And you can go ahead and run this report tomorrow, today, if you want to, to get your number of how many W-2s you need to order. I'll F3 here. If you see anything that you need to change on your edit, you can just go right back to your change or add W-2 information and make that change. I'm going to go in here. Let's see. I want to take a look at Mary Stein. Okay, she looks good. I had a problem with somebody yesterday. I think maybe I cleared her up. There might be somebody else. I'm going to try to go ahead and print my W-2s because I think everything is okay. I think I've got all my errors cor uh, corrected. So I'm going to take option five. Option four lets you print W-2 on standard W-2 forms. That would be a pin feed printer. If you've got holes on the sides of your W-2 forms where you're going to put it through a tractor feed printer, but option five is laser forms. My company number. I'm still going to do my C for combined federal, state, and local. I'm going to use my number one for my sort. And I'm going to use laser two-up forms, but you might have four-up or you might have a self-mailer. Are you printing to an HP printer? Yes or no. Number of alignment lines. This is the number of, this is the number of blank lines. And this screen is pictured on page 36 in your handout. Um, some printers will skip blank lines or forms might require you to skip blank lines at the top. This is that number. Some forms and or print, uh, uh, forms and or printers might require that you put in a number of degrees of rotation. So we allow you to do that if necessary. I rarely see this used, but it's there if you need it. Do you want to print the employee number in the control box? Yes or no. Do you want to print the totals page on every 40th page? Yes or no. It just makes it easier to balance if you need to do that. Do you want to print reissued R or corrected C on the returns? No, I don't want to do that. Select terminated T, active A, or B for both. Do you want to do one state or blank for all, one local or blank for all, H for hourly, S for salary, or blank for all, and you can print one employee or up to five or blank for all, and I'm not going to run this in batch. I'm going to press enter, and I do still have a negative number, so I've got a report in my spool file that's going to tell me who has a negative number, of course you can't file a W-2 with a negative number, and it's employee 138. She's got some local income tax. So if you have any negatives, we will stop you 
and not let you go ahead until you get that negative corrected. Now, you won't want to do this, but I'm going to just go to my local income tax for my employee, and I'm just going to take an option four and delete that line. You would actually need to go back to the employee and find out what the issue was and legitimately correct it. But once that's taken care of, then you'll be able to print your W-2 forms and not get any error. Now my W-2s are in my school file. And I can display those. And it looks like numbers scattered all over a page. And that's because they're designed to print on a form. So at this point, I would feed my form into my printer and print this onto my pre-printed forms. If you are filing paper W-2s, not electronic mag media, step seven on page 36 explains how you would create your W-3 form. That is on the W-2 processing menu, option number 25. And you fill in the information. There's a picture of this screen on page 37 and it will send your W-3 to, the print, to, to your spool file. You only do this if you are filing paper copies with, your, to, with the uh, Social Security Administration. Step eight on page 37. After you print your W-2s, you're ready to create your ESW-2 file for magnetic media filing. And that's step seven on your W-2 menu to create your ESW-2 file. And the first time you go into this screen, you're going to be asked to create a submitter record. <clears throat> But if you've done this before, your submitter record will already exist. So you would want to use option two to change the record. And be sure you change the payment year to 2018. And that reminder is on page 37 in your handout. So you might want to circle that. That's important. The picture is on page the top of page 38. You can use option one to work with companies if you need to add or change any companies under your submitter record. And again, if this is your first year, it will automatically present you with an option to add companies. And I'll show you what that company record looks like if you do need to add or change anything there. Your contact name, phone, and email information down here at the bottom is required. And you can also delete a company if you need to. You would select option nine to create the file or your submitter record. So I'll use option nine. And this is pictured on page 39. And I will press enter. And this is also pictured. This is pictured on page 40. Select the type of file to build. This is my social security 
W2 magnetic media file. So I'm going to select option number one. I'm not going to do this for one state or one local. This is the federal file that I'm going to send to the Social Security Administration. So I'll press enter. All right. I can go back out to my menu. I'm going to press F3. And I can verify that I verify that I created the file with option eight. And here's the file that I just created. Page down. See all of the records that I created for my employees. In step 10 on page 40, I can use option 9 to create the ESW2 wage file for locals. And again, take option 9 to create the file. And you can prompt where it says build this file for, and it's going to bring up a list of all of the locals that you have set up in your tax table. So you can just select the local codes that you want to include. And then step 11 at the bottom of page 40, after you've created your EFW2 file, and the file will be named W2 report, you would transfer the file from your iSeries to your PC. And it's going to be, uh, you're going to be transferred using a transfer utility program like Client Access, which is what I have on my PC that's connecting me um, to my iSeries. And we do have a document on our website called Transferring Files from the iSeries to the PC Using Client Access. There is AccuWage, which Social Security has made available. It was previously downloadable from Social Security, but it's now an online tool. And I've given you a website on page 41 where you can download AccuWage. AccuWage files should be formatted as ASCII text, but sometimes we have found that customers do need to format them as DOS random type 2 files. But once you have submitted a successful test file through AccuWage, then you can submit your EFW2 files to Social Security through Business Services Online as ASCII text files. On page 41, we're giving you the dates that you need to file. The filing deadline is January the 31st for your federal files. A lot of states have also accelerated their deadlines to January the 31st as well. So make sure that your state has not changed their deadline. If their deadline was not January the 31st last year, and a lot of them did change it last year, but if yours was not one of the ones that changed last year, make sure about your state's deadline this year because a lot of them are changing those deadlines to follow the federal government's lead, and a lot of states are now requiring that you file with the state on January the 31st also. BSO filers may upload files beginning as early as December the 9th, and EDT filers may also begin transmitting files as early as December the 9th. Step 12. On page 41, 
The W2 work file can be saved to a tape or to a save file so that it could be restored if needed in the future. You don't have to save it. It will stay on your iSeries in your OIPay files library. But if you want to, you can use option 10 to save that work file. And we've got pictures of these screens on the bottom of page 41. And then if you needed to restore it, there's option 12. You could clear the work file with option 11 and then restore it later with option 12. Um, some people will ask about clearing the work file to free up space. The work file does not take up a lot of space, so I don't ever recommend that you clear that work file for space purposes. It's just, it doesn't take up that much space. So I always recommend that you just leave it out there. It's just easier that way. Step 13 on page 42 applies to those users with employee self-service. There will be an Opticom in January <laughs> that will uh, allow you to push your W-2s to employee self-service so that your employees can access their W-2s in ESS. Uh, on page 42, we've given you a note reminding you that employees must sign an agreement every year giving you permission to do that if you're providing them their W-2s via ESS. On page 43, we've given you a list of other resources, websites, phone numbers, times of operation for things like BSO and uh, Social Security, their hotline, Affordable Care Act, contact information. So keep that handy in case you need to get a hold of anybody. And of course, Optimum Solutions support staff is always here for you. And we genuinely hope that you have a successful and uneventful year end in 2018, please do contact us with any questions that you have throughout the whole process. This um, webinar has been recorded today and we will post this on our website uh, in a couple of days. So if you want to refer back to this or train other staff by letting them watch this, it will be available shortly on our website. And we want to thank all of you very much for joining us today. And we will see you again in early 2019, where we're all having a happy new year. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. See you later.